Let's now take a look in more depth at one of the most sophisticated defense systems on the planet, the vertebrate immune system. And we'll begin with the innate immune response, which is rapid and general. There are some design issues that are involved in thinking about how evolution has constructed the immune system. One of its functions is to protect the organism against pathogens. Another, equally important, is to manage relationships with commensal microbiota. The problems are that pathogens can reinfect, they are diverse and they can evolve, and they're made from the same stuff that we are. The solutions are to remember past infections, to develop a system that can respond flexibly to pathogens with characteristics that have never been seen before, and to figure out how to write, recognize self and not destroy self. So these are large benefits, but of course they can bring with them then large costs. The innate immune system is one that's found in all animals. It has several functionally autonomous defense modules. These evolve to deal with different classes of pathogens. The epithelial barriers, mucosa and skin are ancient. Phagocytes and their antimicrobial defenses, such as lysozymes, reactive oxygen species, and nitrous oxide are also ancient. The complement system and the acute phase proteins are proteins found in the blood that can coat pathogens and inactivate them. Antiviral defenses include natural killer cells, NK cells, and type 1 interferons. These have evolved a bit more recently. Mast cells, eosinophils and basophils, are cells that defend us against parasites like worms. The macrophages and the neutrophils are cells that eat, that phagocytose, microbial cells, and they deliver them then to the lysosomes for digestion. Lysosomes are organelles in, inside the macrophages and neutrophils. The detection of a viral infection then elicits production of type 1 interferons and they induce about 200 proteins that have antiviral activities. The detection of a multicellular parasite like a worm triggers deployment of mast cells and basophils. They produce histamine to increase blood flow to the tissues. Of, they produce eosinophils that fight parasites with reactive oxygen species, cytokines, enzymes, and mucus in the mucosal epithelium to expel the parasites. So this is a complex and fairly rapid reaction, which is part of the innate immune system. The complement system is about 20 blood proteins that complement the functions of antibodies and phagocytes. Complement the term complement refers to the whole set, is activated by the detection of a component of a microbial cell wall. It can directly lyse some microbes and others it coats, this is called opsonization, marking them for phagocyte destruction. So it's kind of like the forester going through the forest and putting a yellow flag on a tree that should be cut down. Complement proteins are produced by the liver in response to signals of inflammation. So the liver is a very important immune organ. The innate immune system relies on recognizing patterns and it uses recep receptors to do that. It has pattern recognition receptors like the toll-like receptors that sense microbial infection. These receptors detect conserved structures that are unique to microorganisms and that are essential to their function. Activating these receptors produces an immediate inflammatory and antimicrobial response that's mediated by cytokines, by particular cytokines, interleukin-1, IL-1, interleukin-6, IL-6, and by tumor necrosis factor TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. These are signaling molecules that talk between cells. That's why they're called cytokines. These coordinate a complex response that involves liver, bone marrow, the hypothalamus, fat, and muscle. So although the immediate language is molecular and cellular, 
the response being coordinated is one that covers the whole body and major organ systems. They activate, activate dendritic cells, which are sentinels that are posted in most tissues to detect and digest pathogens. And dendritic cells will then present their antigens to T cells, and that will initiate the adaptive immune response. So the cytokines that are released by phagocytes activate the acute response. They are proteins that are made by one set of cells that affect the behavior of other cells. And the cytokines IL-1, IL-6, and new tumor necrosis factor alpha will be activating cells in liver, bone marrow, hypothalamus, fat, muscle, and in dendritic cells. In liver, liver will produce acute phase proteins and activate complement. Bone marrow will mobilize neutrophils and produce phagocytes that will then produce phagocytes and lead to phagocytosis. The hypothalamus will increase body temperature, so this is fever. Fat and muscle cells are going to be mobilizing protein and energy to allow increased body temperature. This will lead to decreased viral and bacterial replication, increased antigen processing, and increased specific immune response. So this raised temperature is part of a coordinated response to infection. Then dendritic cells migrate to lymph nodes and mature where they then present antigens to T cells and initiate the adaptive immune response. So to summarize, the innate immune system is a generalized and ancient immune system based on molecular recognition patterns that are shared by broad classes of pathogens. Is it a virus? Is it a bacterium? Is it a fungus? Or is it a worm? This system reacts quickly. Some of its components are actually continuously active. Complement, for example. It activates the adaptive immune system and it instructs it about which kind of defense to produce.